Welcome to Accelerating Adobe Post Production, uh, presented to you by Base and The Real Cannonball Run. Today we're going to be talking about building an end-to-end -end content chain in the cloud. You may be familiar with the Hollywood movie, The Cannonball Run, about a race across the USA. But only a few people know that there is a true story behind this cult film, because the illegal race from New York to Los Angeles really happened. It was a political protest in the 1970s by journalists, celebrities, and racing drivers against President Richard Nixon's nationwide speed limit of 55 miles per hour. They set out for their ideal of American freedom and to prove that it's possible to drive across the USA quickly and safely following the example of the German Autobahn. Our documentary now follows the route of the legendary race and explores how the event and the film shape society and pop culture until this day. I think that we're being overwhelmed by rules in America, and uh, in particular the 55 mile an hour speed limit and all of that attendant nonsense. Our role as uh, free citizens of the United States is coming to an end, so we've got to fight back. They'd made everybody a criminal. No one was going to drive 55. They said, what about a race across country? You check out in New York City and then you stamp in at the Portofino, which is the farthest point in LA, it's the ocean, and the shortest elapsed time wins. So at base, we enable our creative customers to manage, collaborate, and deliver their content. We build an on-ten content supply chain in the cloud. Everything we do is cloud-based solutions. We streamline people's workflows, starting with backup file transfer, enabling people to remote workly, collaborate with each other, integrate their media libraries, and add layers on top like AI. And we've got bespoke integrations, which we do with our professional services team. And the final piece of the puzzle, which we've just launched with our um, a new tech technical partner, Alluvio, is a Web3 integration. So I think it's really important to touch on what Web3 actually is in the context of what we're talking about. So Web1 was obviously the basic first iteration of the World Wide Web, and it was used for text-based communication. That developed to Web2. We went to images, audio, videos, and vast, vast platforms. We're now at a transition point, and we're moving into Web3. So Web3 is a decentralized blockchain network. These are, enables content creators to become owners of their data and control their income. New ways to monetize and own content is lower cost and more sustainable supply chains. And this is because it reduces the reliance and the need for mass amounts of servers when you're distributing the content across the content chain. In order for this project to happen, we obviously aren't completely in Web3 at the moment, so we had to take the, boat, the best part of Web2 and Web3. The best part of Web2 that we've taken is everything that we do in the cloud. So ingest, manage, edit, master, and publish the content. But this enables using Web3 to generate revenue. So we're talking about NFTs, marketplaces, memberships, collectibles, trading, pay-per-view, so for example, you could watch the first ever live stream of the Rear Cannibal Run, as an example, um, on a pay-per-view platform built on Web3. So it's all built on the, on, the, on the blockchain. You can create different types of experience with the fans. So this empowers the content creators to engage directly with their fans, and they own all that content, and they can decide how it's managed, how it's distributed, when to distribute it, is it behind a paywall, is it a one-off, for example, if a pay-per-view, is it a one-off stream, or can people keep, uh, keep watching the content? And finally, when they do watch the content for director fan delivery, it's on demand and it's delivered just in time. Because it's not on a server, it just comes straight out of the blockchain chain in 4K, delivered through the marketplaces, multi-layer of content. So obviously, looking at where things are going, everyone wants to cut costs, it's efficient, uh, but it was also really streamlined. So the solution for us was to integrate Web3 technology throughout the life cycle of our production. It empowers us as filmmakers to make what we want, when we want, in the least restrictive way. Working with major studios or commissioning editors, you never get as much creative freedom. Now, this new way of working gives us transparent ownership and monetization. So if the idea and creative are strong and there's an active audience or fan base for what you're making, then the platform grows and becomes instantly profitable, allowing the creators to reinvest and to grow. 
it bucks the traditional approach of huge capital risk, expensive platform cost, and lack of opportunity, for example, female and young talent. So Web3 technology is also a self-empowerment tool for female filmmakers like me. We strongly believe that Web3 is going to accelerate content creation and distribution, and I think it's going to happen a lot faster than we probably realize. We're currently building a, a cloud-based foundation for the new realm of content distribution and production, and we're really excited and we hope you are too. Thank you very much for listening, and we hope you have a really good afternoon. Thank you.